sun's coming up. I thought, wow, you can see your breath without a cigarette. <laughs> I thought I'd do one on, uh, first of all, a lot of people have, uh, a lot of people have asked me if I would produce or mix mainly their, uh, their record and I'm flattered, but I'm not interested in that <clears throat> at this time at all. Um, I, uh, this is really a labor of love for a couple of different reasons. I'm not really, uh, as far as mixing other people's stuff, I'm not really well. And, uh, it's, uh, it's a labor of love, all of this for me. And, and the other thing is, uh, I'm really expensive or somebody like me is really expensive. You're talking hundred bucks an hour, 20 hours a song, a couple of grand a song up to 4,000 per song for a major label and I've worked at the highest levels. I've thousands of gold and platinum records have come through my mastering lab and uh, I've mixed, mixed, recorded, mixed and mastered hundreds of albums. A lot of them, uh, I insisted in fact for years that people keep my name off of stuff because when you're young you sort of well first of all everybody almost everybody fails so you don't want to be associated with failure but then also when you're young I mean I just thought uh, that uh, it is actually cold out here my thinking was well this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life so somebody early on told me to keep your privacy or whatever and I was kind of a freak about that I might have been, you know, a little bit of a mistake. Um, things happen, but yeah, I mean, the uh, the arrogance and ego of youth, you know, when when I was hobnobbing with the hottest rock stars and movie stars in the world, uh, I just sort of assumed, well, this will go on the rest of my life, and uh, you know all of that and I kind of I, I backed out of it I chose to sort of put that life to a halt for a lot of and I, I fell ill you know got sick so um, but anyway no I'm not at any price available to uh, uh, mix or work for other people it's a labor of love especially in this environment um, you know I had a uh, a woman from Dubai who was just a stunning beauty. She was from Dubai and, and had, you know, literally not millions but billions of dollars at her disposal. And uh, it was a legit deal over a period of a few weeks before I blocked her or whatever. <laughs> I don't even remember, but um, she uh, basically in so many words was offering to kind of buy me uh, and uh, you know I mean she was like floor length jet black hair and those dark dark eyes you know and just a stunner but at the same time she had sort of plotted out the rest of our lives together and that went on back and forth like back and forth for just a little short amount of time I'm old <laughs> I'm like coming up on 50 and uh, you know, that's that's one of those deals where I thought about it. It was tempting, but uh, it's like I you get to a certain age where you know who you are. It is cold out here. But you get to a certain age where you really, and that's kind of the secret to life, I think, knowing who you are and where you belong in the scheme of things and I don't belong in Dubai <laughs> at any price and uh, those kind of side trips or uh, distractions from from living out the full expression of your life are uh, that's like the how can you say that isn't that really the ultimate uh, sort of the ultimate thing or the ultimate conflict sort of not falling into these sort of traps in life about where you belong 
who you are and where you belong and doing what you love, you know, so, and, uh, and under your own authority kind of a thing. Not answerable to anyone. So, you know, that was, that was a deal, but that's like the eternal struggle for me, you know, I've fallen into some things, or may, not even fallen in, just decided to go in directions like that, but no, I'm not, uh, I need to get me a timer that gives me ten minutes, my perception of time is, I learned years and years ago, is not the same as other people, uh, but yeah, in music, Mixing is the thing, and these mixes I do, they'll stand up against anybody, anywhere, anytime, any place. And in fact, probably they best some of the original, some of them. You know, I'm realistic, <laughs> and they're not all fantastic. It's sort of a point of how hard am I willing to work anymore. There's not any guesswork in my mixes, but no, I'm not interested. You know, and most people. Uh, couldn't even begin to afford me, like I told one guy <laughs> years ago, this is years ago, when prices were considerably lower, what was it I said, <laughs> or he said, some, oh, I said, I, uh, it was basically, we're lucky the record label's paying for this, because, oh, I was I said, I was like, I said, uh, we're lucky the record label's paying for this, because I could never afford a complete bastard like me. <laughs> But uh, I've been asked that a lot, and you know, um, the good news is what I am going to do is, uh, first of all, the technology is there and available for everyone, and what I do, I mean, is mostly about the knowledge and the hours put in, and uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where... Um, it's been a lifetime to get this knowledge, and I, uh, there's not any guesswork in my mixes anymore. It's, I pretty much land it right on the hole in one, you know, every time, if I'm willing to go through the hours. And, you know, just learning what quality is. I mean, I have, uh, it's kind of like, I don't want to turn it into like a bitter resent log or anything. I try not to do that, you know. But uh, it uh, it's the sort of thing where um, when I first started, uh, after my first couple few years of college, I went to a recording arts school and then I returned to college later. But uh, um, to get more education, all having to do with recording, really. And uh, one of the first talks uh, one of the teachers gave at the tech school, he said, you know, you guys haven't been exposed to, you know, high quality, high definition recording, so you don't even know what quality is. And so a lot of it, it's sort of on that level, uh, sort of realizing what is high quality and how do you get it and so on. And... Uh, it's a, it's a whole process from the moment that you, you know, set up to start recording something to recording it to mixing it. And the magic is in the mix. It's, it's like playing another instrument. Every bit is detailed, much more detailed than playing guitar at a very prof proficient level. It's kind of like, the, it's all in the mix. The same with the film is all in the edit. You know, when you do this stuff a lot... It, Film is all in the edit. Film and video are in the edit, and music is all in the mix. And uh, it's uh, it's so involved, and it's such a a thing. Anyway, uh, but that was one anecdote. <laughs> you guys don't even know what quality is, and it turned out he was right. He was kind of a dick about it. I I try not to come off as arrogant or a prima donna, but I, I'm not, and I'm really easy to get along with. But you know, another anecdote on that level is uh, um, the studio assistants at major labels. You, they give you all these kids, and you kind of have their job is to set up mics and patch in gear in an unfamiliar environment to you. And 
and uh, even if it is familiar, it's grunt work. Their job is not to chime in and try to produce what you're producing. You know, they don't have near the experience or chops that a, a, a seasoned producer such as myself. <laughs> Sounds really sort of... That guy is full of himself, but it's just after so many years you come to a certain place, you know. But uh, if they even knew... I'm getting... Crow. I'm getting ready to unfriend a couple of guys who were assistants at a major label that I produced a lot of stuff for because... Uh, they still, after 20 years or 25 years, it's annoying to me that they still don't realize that uh, the difference. They're, they're, they're guys who like run taco stands or something now, you know, and I'm still doing music. And, uh, you know, the, people comment all the time how, how great the mixes sound and stuff. And uh, I'm aware of that, you know, that's, it's my life's work that I'm dealing with here. Um, I want to get around to some originals, but maybe, who knows, it's none of, it's just music, none of it's a big, big deal anymore. But um, I can't make things a big deal, because when you start making everything a super big deal, then suddenly you're intimidated by it, so... One song's like another, one's day, one day is like another, and I just, you know, just doing it is the thing, going through the footwork. But, uh, yeah, I'm getting ready to unfriend these guys. It's, it's sort of a thing of, uh, even after all these years, it, it's, I almost, I look at it as, it's not really their fault, they just don't have the background to understand that they just their job was to be an assistant and some of them went on to call themselves producers wrongly you know without any credentials and um howdy it it, it uh, you know it's just one of those things where if they even knew the difference between the, the professional producers that came in there with a track record and them that would be something but they don't even know that still um, it's uh, I think probably the keys to a lot of stuff and you know hey we all have problems and mistakes and this and that and a level and you can always get you can always get better at whatever you're doing. I get better every single time I sit down to uh, record and definitely mix something, you know. Um, but um, I get, uh, where am I at time-wise? Well, 13, I'll try to keep it. Fit. You know, some stuff annoys me. I mean, basically, and like I said, it's not really their fault. These guys just don't have the education or the background. And, and, and another guy, a friend of mine, longtime friend of mine, who just wasn't at my level of musicianship or anything. We were, we were good friends for a long time. Uh, I opened a recording studio and uh, did really well. And so he sort of saw that and copied my business in the building right next to him and opened a, a studio and, and when he did that I just realized like oh man you know dude by you doing that just tells me you know nothing about me or the, the pains I put in to learn this stuff and the expertise that I've accrued over the years from experience or fails out the ass you know and uh, you know my friend Paul, he still, Paul still uses his, his name's Paul, and we're, we're not, we're not friends anymore, definitely not now, uh, well, kind of, I'm not for or against him, but he's one of those people that I realized, like, just didn't understand how much was involved, and, and sort of saw himself as this big, you know, artsy musician, and sort of a mediocre musician, mediocre talent with a one note Johnny kind of thing and but the fact that he put up a studio <laughs> and uh, sort of called himself a producer when he had no skills in that area more than anything just told me oh dude you 
you just don't understand any of this at all and you don't get the pains I put in. Anyway, I'm turning into a Zenalog, you know. <laughs> it's morning. But no, I'm not uh, really at any price. And most people, I think, are sort of... The, the, the good news is I'm going to make a video series, uh, a two-hour DVD you can order directly from me, mainly because if I'm ever going to make any money at it, it seems like that'll be the... at this, that'll be the avenue. And... Uh, The, the licensing of songs now, it's just ridiculously expensive for what it is uh, and I've got so many originals that it, it really pisses me off totally the way things are done nowadays uh, the cost involved when the technology exists to uh, let anybody record anything and the minute they start selling it that could all be tracked by computer and charge them per unit instead of having to pay a tremendous amount of money up front for each song, you know, I mean, relatively tremendous. When you're talking a hundred songs and I want a license, it gets very expensive, so... I mean, I have... Every, people should get paid, but like somebody else said, a really wise, you know, smart guy, said, and then I'll stop on this note, that, that licenses and copyrights were designed for another time and not this age, and that they last too long and enforce too much these days, when those songs really belong to all of us in a way, and uh, I understand about the artist writing it and so on, but it's really arrogant, I've written thousands of songs, some of them are in movies and all kinds of crap, but it would be arrogant of me to tell you I knew where any of them came from, and uh, they're not mine. I should make money on them and have uh, for a certain amount of time. But somebody really jumped my case at one point in my career because when her brother died, she happened to find out while she was listening to one of my songs up in the Hollywood Hills. And uh, it, uh, it meant a lot to her. And then I, I didn't, it's kind of a country ish song, and I was kind of a metalhead for years. And, um, it, uh, it, you know, the stupid deal of the day for Musician's Friend is getting to where it, you'd be stupid to buy it. <laughs> but, um, anyway, you know, she, I wanted to kind of get rid of the record of any, on the internet or in real life of ever having had this one song. It's on my site now. It's called Wishing Well. Wishing Well. But, uh, she, uh. That song just meant the world to her and a lot of people, and I really, it's its a cool song, but I mean, you know, it's one of thousands I've written that just happened to come out okay, and uh, so I took it off of the internet, and, and I stopped putting it anywhere on any of the CDs or DVDs or anything I'd done, and she lost her copy and was looking, anyway, her point was, look, that's as much a part of my life as it is yours. And I listened to that every day, all day, for years, and it just meant so much to me, and you're just a dick for trying to keep it like that, you know. And uh, so anyway, she was right. You know, I see that now, uh, that these things become part of people's lives. Anyway, it's awfully, it's really expensive to license stuff, and, and the, the copyrights last too long, and... Uh, they're not enforced properly by YouTube, and there is a way to do it where everybody makes money, and that's per play, tracked by computer, that could be easily done. Um, you know, nobody ever watches these, I'm not real uptight or worried about it, but, uh, that's, uh, you know, a lot of people have asked me if I'd mix or produce or whatever, and I don't, I really don't think that they understand the cost with that involved, or that at any price this is a labor of love and uh that um but that you know that's not something where my head's at or what it's something i'm interested in at this point and probably never again you know everybody wants to sound epic and what i plan on doing though is re releasing a, a dvd not and it'll it'll end up on youtube of course but something for sale a DVD of how to from A to Z record, mix, and master. And now that I especially have something that people, you know, some great mixes that people really like. So, 
and you know on a DVD and surround so you know that's where my head's at I mean um, I might do an album and release it for the people want to download all the time my stuff you know for pay but um, we'll see I know I noticed even uh, Trent Reznor who was mr. I'll give it away and uh, is now you know charging he has something on iTunes and with uh, the, that stupid band with his wife which was a huge mistake talk about Yoko owning yourself he got wussy whipped you know uh, a guy like him his mixes have been kind of he also needs to bring in somebody technically to, to make his stuff sound good uh, perfect anyway it, it's they've been kind of grainy and sort of industrial sounding and that's his thing but whatever a lot of it's because he insists on you know doing all the stuff himself and he's not really that's not his thing the art itself is his thing not the recording but anyway he's selling something now so you know and he said he'd give it away for the rest of his life so we'll see you know the rest of his career you know it could be an epic career um, he's Trent's joined up with Adrian Ballou of Nine Inch Nails, or four Nine Inch Nails, and so we'll see. You know, I'm kind of. It could be so epic with the right people involved, or just such a piece of crap. I'm really sk kind of skeptical with Adrian Ballou. Uh, anyway, we'll see. He's a 47 year old father of two who's married some actress musician type you know he's just in my opinion blowing it um but uh yeah that's what i'm thinking no I, i'm not interested in mixing or mastering anybody's stuff and uh at any price and there you go it's morning sun's up time for me to go to bed